Back in my cowboy hat. Well, I like to look butch. I'd also like to thank you for downloading. Thank you for watching. Welcome back to Rob's Feed Today. This is episode number 68. And I'm Rob Shendo. I can't think of anything sexier for a good looking man to be dressed in blue collar style. Oh, he looks so butch. Good looking and butch. In my attempts to be the same way, I'm wearing a blue work shirt, cowboy hat. I love that cowboy hat, as you know. Style is real important. And if style makes you butch, at least look butch, I love it. I'll be right back. Maybe you're a college student living in a dorm. Maybe you just live in a small studio apartment. What you need to do is get over to dormco.com slash rob. Once you're there, you'll find all kinds of items specifically designed for folks living in small spaces. That's dormco.com slash rob. Now, don't get me wrong. There are lots of styles I find attractive, and you don't always have to be a blue-collar construction worker or a cowboy. I, off, I love the Abercrombie look. I love the well, Hollis is the same thing. I love American Eagle clothes. I just bought a shirt today from American Eagle. Uh, but but it's but it's a butch plaid shirt. So. One of my all-time favorite shirts to wear is like a mechanic's shirt, you know, with uh, your your company name on one vest and the, and your, your name on the other one, and I look good in those too. And if you're wearing one of those, I'm certainly going to notice you. Now speaking of butch looking, <laughs> you're going to love this segue. Oh, this is bad. Yesterday. The United States Senate confirmed President Obama's nominee to the United States Supreme Court, Supreme Court of the United States, Elena Kagan. There's been a lot of speculation about her sexuality, her orientation. And, you know, she's, she's not the most feminine, not the most beautiful woman. But I think she's going to be a damn fine Supreme Court justice. By the time... You watch, watch this episode. She will more than likely have been sworn in. So congratulations, Miss Kagan. Sorry I teased you there for a sec. But this is great. What we need now is the, the, for President Obama to the, uh, have the opportunity to appoint another justice. Let's get this balance a little more in sync with the way our minds are in this country. But this has been an incredible week for, for those of us who are gay or pro progressive, at least. Now, the, the, again, the um, decision that uh, Justice Vaughn Walker made yesterday rejecting Proposition 8 was just wonderful. I'm still in the afterglow about it, and I'm sure most, pe most gay people in the country are. People were tweeting me yesterday or this morning asking if I had a hangover. Well, no, I didn't, didn't actually celebrate with, with alcohol, but... But I did celebrate that. And then I read today that uh, Mexico's Supreme Court, our neighbors to the south, they have uh, approved the uh, same equal equality in marriage provision down there. But then I was saddened to read that it pertains only to the state of Mexico City, not the whole nation of, of uh, Mexico. So they've got a little bit of work to do. A little bit. It's probably a substantial amount of work to do there as well but we're not done here either yet but these baby steps are wonderful and I, I can't really contain myself so why is the right to marry someone of my same gender all that important to me I don't have any prospects there's nobody I would consider marrying right now nobody I'm not, I'm not even dating anybody but the right to marry why is that so Fucking important to me. Well, it is important to me because that's the last, that's the last thing that stands in the way of me as a gay man being 100% equal to every other man in this nation of ours. My lesbian friends, equal to every other woman 
in this nation of ours. It's a great country. And that's the last holdout, the last thing. Total 100% equality will only come to gay people when they, too, are allowed to marry who they choose, who they love. Now for a little bit of pop culture that I promised you earlier in the week. I, I have nothing to say except I'm bewildered because uh, Ms. Cloris Leachman, remember her? Phyllis from the Mary Tyler Moore Show and also the Phil, her own show, Phyllis. She's on, been on Dancing with the Stars and she's done a number of things. But she made a what I, I on the surface is a rude comment about Betty White. And we all know Betty White. It says, I'm so sick of Betty White. Da, da, da. Well, I, I don't know the context. In the last few weeks, we've learned just don't take things on, on the surface. There's, remember Shirley Sherrod? So I'm just going to let it fly. I'm not going to make a comment one way or the other. I have a feeling Ms. Leachman was using that dry sense of humor of hers and just being funny. Now I want to talk to you about a really super gay podcast. Not mine. This is an audio podcast, and it's award-winning. It is the so, most ambitious project I think I've ever seen, and one of the pioneers in podcasting, LGBT podcasting for sure, Feast of Fun. It's produced by and hosted by Fausto Fernos and Mark Helian, a gay couple here in Chicago. And they have the greatest production values. They have the most interesting guests. And they interview the, some of the best topics. If you don't listen to Feast of Fun, do it. You can find it on iTunes. Go to feastoffun.com. It's wonderful. You'll, you won't regret it. I can't believe the amount of preparation that these guys must go through to produce this show and do it so well. It's an, an incredible amount of work. And I've learned that in just doing this little, these little talks with you. <clears throat> in order to come up, I just fly by the seat of my pants. It's easy when a court decides that uh, a marriage ban is unconstitutional or something, because that's real easy then. But uh, when that isn't in the news, you're scanning everything everywhere, looking for LGBT issues or entertainment shit or political stuff that's, that I think would be important or at least interesting to the people. But these guys are masters at it. And I, my, hat, my hat should be off to them. Now this week they presented an episode that I guess they had recorded a while back. But it was with great Carol Channing. Hello, Dolly. Here I was talking about being butch and now I'm doing Carol Channing. Well, what a dynamite woman. I mean, what a wonderful career. I don't know how many, I am, how many Tony Awards she's received and the, the films that she's been in. And, and most people know who Carol Channing is. And it was wonderful, and I so respect how they got this opportunity to talk to Carol Channing. And, you know, honestly, I would have done the same thing they did, but it gave me pause because I didn't feel that Ms. Channing had everything still there. At one point, she even handed the interview over, although briefly, to her husband to answer a question. And it's just a moral dilemma there. Then it would have been for me at least. Should after all this work, should we go with this interview? Should we overlook these little flubs, whatever, or should we scratch the whole thing? It's a problem of age, and it will affect all of us. But uh, I'm glad they kept it in. I guess you know it's. It gave me some insight. I, I actually went and researched a little bit more about her. She's 91 years old, according to Wikipedia. And, uh, so she has a right to be a little scatterbrained, I think. She's earned it. She deserves it. Hi, Carol. You're one hell of a dolly. Earlier this week, I had talked about the fact that I had at one time been a nude model for art schools. And uh, I wanted to correct something I said for first actually I, I do it yet but uh, I said I supported myself on that and that's not quite true I, I, I misspoke there because uh, you can't support yourself being an art model 
Um, you might be able to make a nice living if you do pornography or something, but we're talking about an artistic situation that isn't erotic, but is an awful lot of work. Imagine trying to stand totally still, not moving a single muscle for, um, uh, for ultimately hours, although you get a break every half hour or so, but it's, it's not, not easy. And um, these are classroom situations largely. So um, although I was bu I'm quite busy, I could go five days a week, two classes a day, classes would be two and a half hours each or so. You can't, you can't, li you can't live on that. And suddenly school's over for the summer. And there's three or four months when there's no business at all. So uh, I don't. Anyone aspiring to do the same, don't expect to to live off of it. I was fortunate; I had other resources at the time. But it, looking back, probably was my favorite job. But just I, the nature of the beast of me. As I said, they have all those pairs of eyes looking at your naked body. That's fun. I'm very happy with the way this podcast is going. It seems that new people are discovering Rob's Feet today, every day, and that's great. It's generating the interest, words of mouth perhaps, I don't know, but uh, I'm, I'm very happy. If you're new to the podcast, welcome. I hope you subscribe. You can subscribe easily enough right in iTunes. It'll be downloaded to your computer every time I, I release one. But I do need your help. I need your assistance. The uh, iTunes podcast form is the primary source of distribution for every podcast. And the way you get noticed in there is by having people rate and comment about, about your content, about your podcast. So the more people who rate, the higher up in the rankings it goes, the more visibility it gets. I please ask you, go into iTunes, rate and comment about this podcast. I would so appreciate it. And I'll even give you a shout out right here on, on, on the screen. And now having said that, well, this butch little guy is going to say, just saying, that's all I'm going to say. Thank you.